Monthly meetings with Dr. Sarah happen in group settings. I love it when I meet you in a group because there is wellness in that. When you let yourself be seen, truly seen in a group, you can be picked up, carried, and moved forward. Uh, something beautiful starts in one way, and it grows and expands and continues in other ways. The story of Elizabeth Barrett Browning and Robert Browning started in words. Every one of your relationships, every one of your actions, every one of your deeds, they start in something, a common theme, a common way of being within you. You can choose to live by choice versus by accident. I learned that from Werner Earhart. When you hold yourself, when you hold yourself to a intense process, fortitude, right? <laughs> Elizabeth Barrett Browning spoke of her husband with three words, fortitude, integrity, courage. He had that within him. She saw that, called it out, caused that to be the truest in friendship. It's easy to be something you're not. It takes so much courage. Courage, the root of that from your heart to be what you are. And only you can define that. And only you can choose the actions that go along with that. So to live by choice, for me, that's freedom. Uh, whatever music plays might play, <laughs> I will listen and I will dance to that music in a way that creates my words are real in the world. Let me say that another way. No matter what, no matter when, no matter where, no matter how, my words matter to me so much that those words generate matter for me. Putting systems into place, for each one of those words to show up in divine grace. You've got energy, you've got love, you've got the ability to choose how you're going to respond. If ever you're blaming the outside world for anything, you are taking your own power away. If you are seeing what is and bringing forward the true cause of that, you're capable of, oh my gosh, generating the best possible outcome for all involved. The key here though, is to know what your receptors are. What are your receptors on for? What do I mean by receptors? You've got 
your sense of smell, your sense of taste, your sense of <sighs> this moment. You've got all types of intelligence within you. You've got genius. You are a genius. A genius, or else you would still not be breathing and connected with us. What does that mean? Breathing and connected with us. All of life on this, in this, requires you to be able to receive, you to be able to let go, you to be able to witness. What you believe is possible happens <laughs> and creates and generates and celebrates and, wow, gets into your nitty gritty. Some of your beliefs you're aware of, some of your beliefs and agreements you're not aware of. How do you become aware of what you're? taking on consciously or unconsciously. It's action. When it takes time to do something, take action to move into an uncomfortable, not normal for you place, what shows up? I want to say all of that another way. You've got a partnership with your body. You've got a partnership with your ability to take in what's around you. And then you've got a partnership with what you believe, what you carry, what your words are. This morning, I looked up um, Abraham and Sarah. They were in Egypt many hundreds of years before Moses. When Abram and Sarah entered Egypt, he told his wife to lie and say they were brother and sister. 300 years later, a tablet would come out, bear no false witness. Bear no false witness. Bear no false witness against your neighbor. Bear no false witness. Many hundred years before Abram, Abraham, Sarah, Sarah, one way of being, all through the line, another lineage, their lineage produces, wow, in stone tablets, in those tablets, a command, a commandment. So your body, your flesh, your energy knows. And when you have experienced something yourself from the inside out, when you've had that experience, there's nothing but that experience that gives you words. Let me say that another way. An experience happens. And then to record it, you go in seeking of those words. When you start by choosing how you're going to be ontologically, right? Ontological means, uh, it's a word that means, how are you going to be? How are you going to show up? Are you going to show up happy, glorious, blah, blah, blah? Are you going to show up? in your subtle energy, body, movement, moment for moment, filled with what? 
Santana here said mercy, grace, faith, appreciation, acceptance. This is a miracle. Ah, how beautiful to allow yourself that. Are you going to show up and bear no false witness, especially against yourself? What does that mean, huh? When surveyed, when studied, lots of studies, all uh, metadata analyzed. 40% of the people in our world believe they are their own worst enemy. They are self-saboteurs. They haven't gotten that little bit of ontological knowing that Elizabeth Barrett Browning and Robert Browning had. This living as an art, as poetry, as by choice. Now imagine being raised in privilege up until six years old, seven years old, strong, powerful presence of a father, incredible, meek energy of a mother. That was Elizabeth's upbringing in Worcestershire, <laughs> England. I love saying that. I can't pronounce it. I won't try again, really. Robert in London, she was born six years after him, just six years apart. Many years, they would read each other's writings before they met. His first kiss to her, she writes about him kissing her fingers. He first meets her, she is an invalid. She lost her brother to a drowning accident that she witnessed. He convinces her to marry, takes her off to Italy. She says, never speak of my brother. He never does. She never utters his name for it brings such grief. Her father disowned her, her husband, wow, co-created with her, both so brilliant, published, seen, felt, funded with their own way that they chose to be. Frank Sinatra would sing about doing it his way. They did it their way. And so as we move into this age of Aquarius, this new age, you're going to have to give up stuff. Oh, no, not give up stuff. <laughs> yes. Unless you get a powerful, yes, move in that direction, it's a no. It's a no thank you. Ah. Oh, gosh, I love this. I want to share a resource page again for this. This page is called Fortitude, Integrity, and Courage. In the Face of Adversity, the story of Elizabeth Barrett and Robert Browning. Much of what I shared is here. And these beautiful, incredible words, how do I love thee? How do I love thee? Let me count the ways. 
Imagine you saying this to every aspect of yourself. Hearing this, turning the receptors on. How do I love thee? Let me count the ways. I love thee to the depth and breadth and height my soul can reach when feeling out of sight. For the ends of being and the ideal grace, I love thee to the level of every day's most quiet need by sun and candle light. I love thee freely as men strive for right. I love thee purely as they turn from praise. I love thee with passion put to use in my old griefs and with my childhood's faith. I love thee with the love I seemed to lose with my lost saints. I love thee with the breath, smiles, tears of all my life. And if God chooses, I shall but love thee better after death. This is integrity. This is the words of a woman that grew up with a strict father and a mother so meek. She had the privilege of being able to study the classics and correspond with prominent scholars. Her translations of the Greeks in the Byzantine verses were published. And I love Sarah's words, Sarah K. Bolton, right? More fond of books than of social life. She was laying the necessary foundation for a noble fame. The lives of Elizabeth Barrett Browning emphasizes the necessity of almost unlimited knowledge. If woman would reach lasting fame, a great man or woman of letters without great scholarship is, well, not an impossible thing, is well nigh an impossible thing. These are, Sarah K. Bolton wrote a very awesome book, Lives of Girls Who Become Famous, written in 1914. This was the story, tragic loss of her brother, letters of admiration and love. And the, um, all of the reference pages are here. Again, that page is called Fortitude, Integrity, Courage in the Face of Adversity. Um, I want to move to another page in just a moment. I'm going to stop the share. I love us. I love that you are living a life of privilege right now. The ability to read and write and correspond. The choice of whether to be on a computer or outside in the sunshine. <laughs> <laughs> to choose where your food and your friends and your words and the wisdom come from. Wow, what a gift. And yes, everything is changing. I can't tell you yet. It takes courage to hold on to this for a little bit longer so I can share it with all the structures in place. This is how you continue to be part of the community. This is voluntary giving right here. You can give through PayPal, through Zelle, through the bank, transfers. All of it is right there, right? Um, and that is on a page called PayPal Zelle bank transfers, you simply just go to Dr. Sarah Larson 
and you join this way into the great mystery of what is coming. How do you get a session, right? There's two spots. There's one at the top that says sessions and it gives you, right now I have room to do private sessions. This of course will stop very soon as well. Why? Because time and space is all you've really got. And oh my gosh, the time I've got, the space I've got. I've shared a lot. It's all on YouTube. It's all on the website. It's all wherever you want to find it. Whatever is yours to share, how brilliant. And for those that are miracle makers in the academy, of course, you've, um, uh, we have our agreements because being a woman of your word. <laughs> yes, that is integrity. Being careful with your words. Also integrity. Being inclusive. Integrity. Let me tell you what it's like to live a life where you never have to defend yourself. Because there is a heart. You are protected. You don't have to control a thing. You don't have to avoid anything. You don't have to defend anything. You don't have to justify nada. Being free. You don't have to force an outcome. <laughs> Being in integrity, there is no manipulation of any sort or variety. There's no resisting. When resistance comes up, you go, oh, what's that about? And you discover what it's about. Um, is there anything else? There's nothing you withhold. Abram, Sarah, when they entered the land of Egypt many years before their descendant Moses, they lied to keep themselves safe. If you are truly safe on the inside, you will never tell yourself or another a lie. You will just generate more receptors to be able to see more clearly. In your defenselessness, your innocence is held. Your genius is held. Thank you for being yourself. Thank you for continuing to generate layers and layers of integrity, of wisdom, of brilliance, of all of your words. So to live at choice, to live in love, <laughs> to live by these higher values that cause you to be the best version of yourself. Bravo. Hooray. All right. We are coming to the end of this segment. I'm going to take some questions. Of course, they won't be recorded. They're going to be off camera. And thank you all. <laughs>